In this video, I'm going to explain how to set up your micro bit with the Monk Makes sensor board. And you can see here, this is what the board looks like. And there's an audio sensor, a temperature sensor, and a brightness sensor. And so we're going to connect it to our micro bit, and then we're going to write a code that can give us readings for either all three of these sensors. Okay, and so when it comes to connecting, you can see here, let's just zoom out. Here's your micro bit, and then with all the pins at the bottom, you're actually going to connect all of them to your sensor board. So first of all, you're going to do your black ground pin, using the black cable to the ground pin on your micro bit, the 3 volt um, pin on your sensor board, using your red cable to your 3 volt pin on your micro bit, the brightness sensor, we're going to use the yellow wire and connect it to the number 2 pin, the temperature sensor, we're going to connect with a white um, wire to the number one pin and then the green wire we're going to connect the audio sensor to the number zero pin and then we're going to write a code for this and so the code is actually on this website you can see it's monk makes who are the people who made the sensor um, dot com forward slash mb underscore sensor forward slash so i'm kind of just going to walk you through how to just do the code that they created and so we're going to start out with the sound sensor how to code it up um, then we'll move on to temperature and then brightness and then our last one we're actually going to do a code which allows you to determine all of them at the same time with your micro bit. You can see here with the sound here they're assuming you've got a data logger to display your sound signal. We're obviously not going to have a data logger, maybe you do. Um, so ours is just going to show up on the micro bit. So we're going to use the same code underneath here that they have but you'll see it shows up differently on our micro bit. And so we're going to use the forever blue block. So every time um, continuously our micro bit is going to plot a bar graph of the analog red pin P0. And you can see why is it P0? It's because the audio, which is the first thing you're dealing with, is plugged into pin 0. And I've got this minus 511. It seems to be because the signal is just quite large when it comes out. And so you have to minus this constant from it just to bring it down to a level um, that you can actually display decently. And I mean, I, I thought originally it was just for the data logger. But it turns out even when you're just displaying it on your micro bit, if you don't put this minus 511, all your LEDs come on even when you're not talking because it's just saturated. So you have to minus out this constant just so that um, when there's low noise, only a few lights on your micro bit display, whereas if there's a lot of noise, all the lights come on. So let's get started. You're going to go to microbit.org and then you click on Let's Code. You scroll down here. We're not going to use the Python editor, we're going to use the Make Code editor. Click on Ed Let's Code and then click here on New Project. So automatically, if you're used to it by now, there should be our on start block already and a forever block already. We're going to use this forever block. And you can see here, we need to get this plot bar graph code block that's purple. You can type it in the search block uh, box up here, or you can scroll down to LED. And here is plot bar graph of 0 up to 0. And let's scroll down here. And what you do here is you go into math, you click on this minus sign, click and drag, put it there. And now this first value here has to be, remember, that analog read pin. Now how do you get that? You scroll down here under advanced, you might have to expand your advanced, and you scroll down to pins, and you go over here to analog read pin, the third one down. You don't click on digital, and you don't click on write. You make sure it's read, because we're reading from pin zero, the information. And remember, we're going to put in five, oh, sorry, you can see sometimes Sometimes I, I click on the wrong thing and it like, dismounts all of my code. So you, start, you just have to rebuild it. So click here, type in 511, and it's going to display up to 512. So these were values given on the website. You can see here. Feel free to play around with them if you feel that should be adjusted. And now we do the usual. We give it a name. So I'm going to call it sensor underscore audio. I'm going to call it 2. You can see I've been playing with around with this already. Click on the save button and it'll save it to your computer. And as always, I put it in on my desktop in a folder called Microbit. And I click save. And then it downloads it. And once that's done, you can see you've plugged your Microbit into your computer. So this folder opens up that you can see it's the Microbit and it gives the volume number. And then I go to the folder on my desktop. And this is the folder we just, uh, sorry, the file we just created. I click it and I drag it across. And then that's, once that's done, I'm going to create, I'll take a video of what it looks like on my microbit. 
Okay, and you can see here I've connected my micro bit up to my sensor with all the correct wires and I've installed the program on my micro bit and you can see there's music playing in the background when my daughter's watching TV and you can see the lights are going crazy um, and it's also with me talking and let me come closer and talk louder and you can see more lights obviously brighten up and when I talk very loudly it fills the whole screen and so that's your sound sensor. Okay, so the next step is to code up the temperature and it looks a bit more daunting here, but really don't stress. It's just the fact that you have to multiply and divide and minus by number that needs two steps. And so you can see here, we're setting, we're creating a variable called reading. So it's just a reading of our temperature. And we're making this variable equal to analog read pin one. So whatever we're getting out of pin one, and you can see up here, pin one, here is what it's connected to the temperature. So we're getting obviously temperature values out of pin one. So our variable reading, it's really just a box. I used the analogy previously. And inside of that box, we're putting the reading from pin one. But the temperature value that comes off of here, you can see, um, they talk about it here. They say that the temperature here, the sensor uses a thermistor to measure temperature. The temperature up from the board is a voltage that indicates temperature. So we're getting a voltage value. And so that's not actually the real temperature value. So therefore it has to be converted. And so you convert it to an actual temperature. They say it's quite complicated. And so they've given us a rough approximation of how you calculate it that is easier to code up. So what we're getting out is a rough approximation of the temperature, but it's not so serious. You don't need it to be super accurate. And it says, um, for those of you in America, if you want your temperature in Fahrenheit, multiply the temperature in degrees, which is what you get out by, um, by 9, divide by 5, and then add 32. So um, I'm going to just do the code here, and it's the, co the temperature value we get out is in Celsius, and so you can see here the variable they've used is temp underscore c to denote Celsius. So all I want you to get out from that complicated explanation is that the value that you get out here is a voltage. And you're reading this voltage from pin 1. And so it's not a real temperature value. So therefore we have to convert it using this equation. So that's why you get the variable here and then you convert it in the second step and call it something a different variable here. So let's set this first variable. Um, and we, again, you're going to use this forever code block. And what you do here is you click on variables um, and on the menu, click on it. And you can see there's nothing here. So click on make variable and type in here reading and click OK. And you can see immediately a whole bunch of stuff comes up. So we're going to use the second one that says set reading to and drag it here. And you can see set reading to, and then what we're setting it to is analog read pin one. And remember last time how we did that, we went to pins and we're using analog read pin because um, we're reading in information. And so we drag it here to this where zero is and you paste it down and on the down arrow, click on one. Because remember we're not, the pin zero was the audio, pin one is the picture. Next along here, we're going to do this calculation. So again, we're going to create a second variable that is called temp underscore C. So go back to variable, go make variable, and create one that's called temp underscore C. Click OK. And we're going to click and drag set temp underscore C to zero. And now we do this, calcu this complicated calculation. Um, first, we're going to use a minus, a divide, and then a multiply. So the easiest thing to do is go back here to maths and drag the minus. Sorry, I let go. I've forgotten already. Then divide, then multiply. Maths. So then divide. You can actually, I didn't realize, just click on it and it puts it on the screen. Now you're going to drag it to that first circle. Drag it there. And again, maths. And now we're going to click on multiply. Click and drag to that first circle. Now we need to put values inside of here. What exactly are we going to multiply, divide, and subtract? So we actually want this reading value to go here. Because we're going to take the reading that we got in, we're going to times it by something, divide it by something, and minus something. And the answer is going to be called temp C. You click on variable here, you take reading, click and drag to the first zero. And then remember, we've got to go 75, 
Multiply by 75, divided by 1,000, minus 14. So I click on here, type 75, 1,014. Okay, and then the next steps here are we're going to show number. So we're telling the code to show the number on the screen, and the number it's going to show is temp C. And then it's going to pause for 500 milliseconds, so that's 0 0.5 of a second, and then show the temperature again. And so let's go here. Those are both blue blocks, so click on basic, on show number zero, and drag it underneath. And obviously what we want to put here is the variable temp underscore C, so click on variable, click and drag temp underscore C. And then remember we're going to pause, so let's click here, pause. And they suggested 500 milliseconds, and then it's going to show it again. So that's your code, super easy. So let's call it, um, this is, and click save. I'm assuming I've got a few of these, so I'm going to call it temp5. Saves it to my computer. You can see on the screen here, it's showing you a demo of what it sh should look like. Here's my micro bit already plugged in. I look here for my latest audio, uh, latest hex file and I drag it across. Okay, and you can see I've got a number going across on my screen. There's the pause. So 26 point, a whole bunch of other numbers. So let's actually go to our computer and round it off because we don't want that many decimal places showing up. We want just a whole number. Okay, so how do we round off this value that we get out here so we don't get so many decimals? If you click here on maths and you go here, to round and you click on it so now we have to put it in here before all of the other purples so if you click there it's put it in and it's thrown everything else out um, so we're going to round means round off and it round seems to round it off to the nearest whole number and then I'm going to click on these other circles don't click on this side where they kind of all overlap and click on the right here where you're clicking on the outside circle Click it here, drag it, make sure your yellow is on the zero, and drop. And let's click, call it temp round, and save. Let's have a look what it looks like. Okay, and here you can see on my screen it says 27, and then there's a pause, and it says 27 again. And I just find that a lot easier to read. Okay, and the last thing is going to be to code up the light sensor. You can see the light sensor uses a phototransistor to measure the light level, produces an output voltage that increases as the light level increases. Um, you can see the values here. Um, dark 0 to 3, um, outdoor sunny is 800 to 900. So these are the type of values coming through the pins. Um, and we're going to use a very simple code here. You can see again the forever block Plot a bar graph, we're reading an analog read pin P2, which is the light sensor, and we're saying the value should go up to 100. So let's give that a try. Um, you should know now that we go to LED to go bar graph, we put it in our forever block, and now we're going to go down to pins and go analog read pin and click and go down to P2, and we said go up to 100. And now we're going to save this as light. Oh, again, I've done it a few times, so I'm just going to say light 5, click save, and save on my computer, and then drag across onto my micro bit. Okay, and here's a video you can see on the micro bit, it's telling us how bright it is. If I cover the sensor here, it goes all the way down to one dot. If I take it off, it goes up again. Pretty sure if I shine a torch on it, um, it would fill up all the way with LEDs. The last thing we're going to do is put all of that together into one code. And so what I wanted to do is that when I push button A on my micro bit, I wanted to um, give me a measure of the audio. B, I want a measure of the temperature. And A and B together, I want a measure of the light levels. Just remember the downside of this is that I'm only getting one value out at the time that I push the button. And so it's not giving me a forever value. It's not constantly giving me updated values. So here you can see I'm going to click on output, click on on button A pressed, drag it here. I actually previously, every time I've been redoing my code, I've hidden the code down here. And you can see it's grayed out because it's not really attached to any major block. Um, and so I'm going to drag up this code here and scroll 
and put it there and you can see this is analog pin P0 so this is the audio and now I'm going to click on the outside purple block right click duplicate drag it down here and change A to B so when I push button B I want something to happen I don't want this code anymore so I can drag it out and right click delete blocks I'm going to drill, scroll down here this is all the stuff for the temperature reading I'm going to scroll it up and put it there you can see it's going to read in from P1 and then last option, last set of code, I'm going to click on the purple block here and say duplicate, drag it down here, change A, B to A plus B, drag out this and delete it. Oh, say no, I don't want to delete all of it. Delete blocks. You can also just click delete on your keyboard. Probably would have been click quicker to actually just click on input and drag it in, but anyway. And then this is the last set of code for the light reading. Okay, and that's it. And I always like on start to add a picture, so I know my um, micro bit is working. So I just add a smiley face. Although that means now all our code is a bit covered, but there we are. Okay, so I'm going to call this sensors all, and number five, again I've done this before, and click save. and save it to my computer and then drag it across and then see what it looks like on my microbit. Okay, so you can see here on my microbit I've got a smiley face so meaning it's going. I'm going to push A and it should give me the audio level and so you can see it's quite low. Let me shout and see if it gets any louder as I push it again. As I push B it's going to give me the temperature value so it's still 27 and as I push A and B together it's going to be, give me the light value. And remember, it wasn't very high. I put a, a cloth over the sensor. Let's see, it should go down. Let's push A and B together. You can see it's gone down. So that's how you do it all together. The downside, I think, is the audio when you push A. You're just getting one value at the time. It's not this continuous um, reading unless every time you keep pushing the button.